In some of our most difficult times, we are often tempted to think that God is not present with us. We feel like He is absent and even has maybe even forsaken us. But is this true? Can we really believe what is said to us in Scripture and also believe that God has abandoned us? Stick around and let's investigate this together. Welcome to Answers from an Apostolic Faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Does God abandon us in our most difficult times? Is He absent from us when we are at our lowest state? Is it possible that because I don't feel His presence or spiritually hear His voice, that this means that He is absent or has even forsaken me? Well, the simple answer to all of these questions is no. God never abandons us nor forsakens us. On the contrary, He is probably closer to us in our most difficult times more than we can know or understand. But how do we know this for sure? And how can I be reminded of this when I am so blinded by the difficulties that I face in my life? Hopefully, over the next few minutes, we will take the time to investigate together just how faithful God is to us, His children, and how He has made us many different promises through Scripture, which He always intends on keeping. There is a very famous passage in the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, which speaks beautifully to the idea of how sometimes our problems have a way of making us forget who our God is. This passage is found in chapter 14 and speaks about how Jesus called Peter out of the boat to walk on the water. The passage begins by describing how Jesus was on the mountain by himself praying, while the disciples, they were on the boat by themselves, when all of a sudden the weather was quite disturbing. Scripture says that while the boat was being tossed around by the waves, and clearly the disciples were in danger, the Lord came to them walking on the water. And this is what happens next. Let's read together. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I want all of us to pay attention to something so important. Peter only began to sink when he took his eyes off of Jesus, and he allowed himself to only focus on the chaos that surrounded him. As long as he had focused on Jesus, who came to him in the midst of his troubles, Peter was perfectly fine and even walked on the water as he approached his Lord. The story is of you and me. It's our story. We forget who it is that is calling us to walk on water, to overcome our troubles by going towards Him. And just like Peter, we allow our troubles, which distract us and manage to capture all of our attention, we allow ourselves to believe, even for a split second, that our problems are bigger than our God. And this is the greatest of lies. Our God who is Almighty, Creator of the universe, our God who offered Himself entirely to us, who has not withheld anything from us, not even the life of His only begotten Son. We believe for just a split second the lie that our daily problems and our struggles and our fears are no match for our, our mighty God. How foolish of us. Many today will look at St. Peter 
and want to tell him, but Peter, you're the one who saw him walking on the water. You saw that he had authority over all the laws of nature. Peter, you even are the one who suggested that he call you out on the waters. Peter, you even took steps on the water and through him overcame the laws of nature. How could you doubt after all that? Because of some boisterous winds? Well, if I'm being truthful, the same can be said to me. How many times have I fallen in the trap of thinking that my current problem is bigger than my God? How many times have I failed to remind myself of all the wonderful things that God has done in my life? How many examples do I have in my own life of the times that God has never forsaken me, but rather, in His perfect time, He comes through for me, and everything works out in the end. You see, my beloved, I am Peter. I know who it is that calls me out to walk on water, the one who calls me to overcome my problems with and through Him, and yet I take my eyes off of Him. And this is the first and most important piece of this discussion. When facing difficult times, I should never remove my eyes off of my Savior. Now that my eyes are locked in on my beloved Jesus, and I am asking Him to call me out on the waters, the next important step is to remind myself of all of His promises to me. Offered to us in Scripture, God speaks to all of us, all of humanity, thousands upon thousands of promises. And we know that He is faithful in keeping all of them to us. St. Clement of Rome, a first century bishop of the early church, he writes to us and says the following, Having then this hope, let our souls be bound to God, who is faithful in His promises and just in His judgments. He who has commanded us not to lie, shall He Himself lie? St. Clement is clearly encouraging you and me to recognize that God would never break His own promises to us, when He Himself is the author of truth. If the Lord has made us promises, then we ought to trust in His faithfulness, to trust that He will surely come through in the right time and place and in the way that is best for me. It is God who tells you and me, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalms 50 verse 15. And again, it is God who says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10. This same God who promises to deliver me, to strengthen me, to help me, this God is for me. He wants to fulfill His promises to me and to desire only good for me. It is He who says to me, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. When I place all of these promises before my eyes, when I engrave them on my heart, that I may never forget them, only then will I be equipped with the power of Scripture to silence the voices of demons that try to tempt me with despair and hopelessness. When those same demonic voices whisper to me that He has abandoned me, that He has forsaken me, that He is not faithful, I will be able to silence them and answer back with Scripture, that I may be reminded of all the times that the Lord has come through for me. My beloved, be encouraged and know that the Lord is for you and desires only your salvation. While He does not promise a life of comfort, nor a life that is free from troubles and struggles, He does promise that all things work together for good to those who love God. And when you feel like you are growing impatient and you are awaiting for Him to come to you, to come walking on that water, be encouraged by the words of those who came before us and have tasted the fullness of His love. Listen and be encouraged by the words of a person like St. Pachomius, who says to you and me, it is patience that reveals every grace to you and it is through patience that the saints received all that was promised to them. May He fulfill His promises, not only to the saints who have come before us, but to you and me as we grow patient and keep our eyes on Him. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share to spread God's word. 
Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification to not miss another video. Remember, know your faith, live your faith, and teach your faith.